Mixmaster Morris from London. What kind of music do I spin? I spin what I like on the whole. Um, people call it lots of different names. I call it music. <laughs> okay. is, is it slow paced or fast? Or yes. Very slow? No, I just said yes. Oh, okay. It is slow or fast, yes. Oh, okay. It can be slow or fast. So you go through like a different... I don't understand this a law that DJs have to play all at the same tempo all night. See, I don't understand that. That's kind of like having chocolate soup followed by chocolate followed by chocolate pudding with chocolate sauce, isn't it? It's kind of like too much of the same thing. And uh, I believe that most people, uh, there are now, you know, a thousand and one types of techno and the number is rising every week. And most people like at least two of them. So why can't we mix different types? But, you know, there seems to be some unwritten rules that you've got to play all jungle or all hardcore or all ambient or all hip hop or whatever. And I like to mix these things up. Okay. So you pretty much go through all the styles? No, just all the ones I like. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, there are lots of sometimes conflicting, sometimes reinforcing motivations that go on when you're selecting stuff in a chill-out room. There's a lot of things going on in my, in my mind. You know, first is the necessity to play the stuff that other DJs aren't playing. And on the whole, most DJs play the, the safest, you know. When people have only got an hour to play and they've got to make an impact or they don't work, you know, they might not get to play in that city again. People play the biggest hits and the biggest tunes and so all the things that are a bit more subtle get left behind. And anything that's experimental just isn't getting played because DJs are too fine to experiment. I mean, you wouldn't know from here if most DJs sets, but the last few years people have branched out and made a lot of techno at different tempos, uh, techno with different time signatures, different rhythms, and, you know, I think we can actually have some of this music out now. I think it's safe to play it. Um, but to get the freedom to play that, you have to get rid of this idea that the DJ's sole function is to make people dance, because I think DJs can do a lot more than just make people dance. Making people on a Saturday night full of ecstasy dance is not really difficult, you know. You could bang a stick on the on the stage, you know, <laughs> bang a pile driver, and they would they would dance in some places. In fact, in Germany they do. <laughs> um, it's much harder to make them think than it is to make them dance, or to make them listen. But now that people know, you know, most places they know what I do, and they know I'm going to play something different and it's worth listening to. Now I have. I've carved a lot of space for myself. You know, people don't expect me to play the same records as anybody else, which is good, because, you know, I don't want to play the same records as the DJs. If other DJs start playing all the records I do, I'm going to have to find some new records, won't I? Um, but, uh, the people's visions of what I do in America seem to be a bit, slightly behind the times. People keep ringing up and saying, oh yeah, you're famous for your beatless soundscapes. And I sort of go, oh, I mean, well, yes, I have done some beatless soundscapes in my time, but there's nothing wrong with beats. It's just, uh, the, 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 there's just got to be something better to life than uh, a kick drum substituting for beats, you know. It's not a rhythm, it's just a, a pulse. And uh, I like music to have, you know, a rhythm that took more than 30 seconds to program. <laughs> I, I mean, I'd like people to spend, you know, more than, more than a few minutes on getting the drum track right, you know. Um, I like a bit more labour put into tracks. You know, when you listen to a Fotec track or something, a Black Dog track, you can tell there's been uh, hundreds of hours of programming work have gone into the ready thing. And, you know, it shows in the results. There's real attention to detail. With the early, de with the, like with the early Detroit guys, the music is very minimal, but every sound is perfect in itself and placed in exactly the right place. And do, you, do you get into uh, producing any records or anything? Uh, yeah, <laughs> um, I've done about, I've done four albums, about 20 remixes, and uh, four, five, six, six singles, whatever it is. And what record label? Or um, a bunch of different ones? A lot of different ones, uh, but most people know the stuff I did on Rising High and on Fax, and now I'm in Britain, I'm on Ninja Tune now, and in America I've been on Astral Works and Instinct, and in Japan I'm on Sony. And in Europe, I'm on r &S. <laughs> and Fax. So, that's a few labels. Um, what do you think of this whole scene compared to the scene across, like, the whole German and London, and that whole area scene? The what? The, the whole, like, rave scene itself. Like, well, how the people are... Compared. That word hasn't been used on British soil since yeah. about 1992, okay. you know, I hope so you know. So, what is it considered now over there? 
Good question. Nowadays, the industry are trying to, you know, make they've tried to make the club scene and the dance scene synonymous, and to supplant the rave scene with the, with the club scene, um, and to supplant underground music with like corporate house music. And well, obviously they're doing very well financially, but they're killing the whole scene. Really, they're so make, making music that doesn't have it doesn't have what made house and techno special at all. So pretty much is commercialized over there? It's commercialized to death, yeah, like rock music is over here. You've got to remember that house, allegedly house music is as ubiquitous in England as allegedly rock music is in America, you know, it's everywhere. You can't buy toilet roll without having to hear it in the, in the supermarket, you know? Yeah. You know, even on the football matches on television they play bad house music now. And I don't mean bad house music, yeah. I mean <laughs> crap. <laughs> As, as an artist, um, taking a look at it, say, um, from a visual art viewpoint and in terms of music as an artistic form, and when you produce music and uh, basically even anything you do with music, what things do you look for personally and strive for as far as expanding this field, as far as techno goes? Say, like, if you would look at it as, as swing back in the 30s and techno being today, that, that new sound, that new, new experimentation, what, what goals do you have? Can you repeat the question? <laughs> no, 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 I've heard it. Um, Can you catch a little? Yeah. Well, people use the word techno to mean lots of different things. They use it to, I mean, I, I tend to only use the word as a compliment. I don't use it as an insult. Most people in England use it as a disparaging term. I mean, I don't apply... You know, if something is hardcore, I call it hardcore, not techno, because they're two different things. Um, well, electronic music as, as a genre. Well, I mean, techno is a specific subset of electronic music and as far as I'm concerned the word techno belongs to the people belongs to people like Juan Atkins because he used it first you know um, I think it would have helped the world a lot if the German techno had been called techno with a K because to indicate it's a totally different music which it is um, I noticed some magazine some European magazine I saw they actually had Detroit techno spelled with a CH German techno spelled with a K, and the hardcore was spelled with two Ks or three Ks, depending on how Nazi it was. <laughs> KKK techno, you know, you really want to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> um, it makes sense. Uh, some people just try to say techno is techno, but there's so many different things. Like, when, like the whole scene in this area, when you go to a party, you see a lot of different There's styles. There's probably been play. more time wasted on arguing what techno is than, yeah. than arguing oh. about, you know, between Catholics and Protestants. Yeah. It's one of those, or between IBMs and Macs. Yep. <laughs> um, everybody agrees, I, I used to say, everybody agrees that 90% of techno is shit, but they just disagree on which 10% is worth keeping. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I'm of that ilk. Um, I, I, I have the same attitude to techno that I do towards jazz, because it is, are we? Oh yeah, what is techno? Well, no, Jeff Mills said a good thing. He said that techno is when you go out and you hear something you never heard before. Something that's like totally amazing that blows your mind. Well, it damn well should be like that. Because to me, that's the, you know, if there's no progression in the music, then it's dead and it's not worth hearing about. Uh, I want to hear something that's totally different from what I've ever heard before. Um, always, like every month, I want to hear something new. Um, and most people over here, a lot of people over here seem to be just content to do the same old thing forever, you know? I mean, there are some DJs, you come to see them, you go and see the Wicked DJs from San Francisco, they're playing the same records every year they did last year, the year before and stuff. I mean, like, this is kind of safe, isn't it? Um, and in England, people, have got so much pressure to play the new stuff that, uh, you know, people... I change my box over every week completely. There's just so much stuff coming through and you can't even play it all once. So uh, there's just a deluge of music coming out now, which is good. Do you think electronic music is going to hit a peak and then drop or just keep going um, it can only progress so far I don't know I'm not sure about that um, <laughs> and yeah, I'm not sure that it's know. electronic music anymore I mean it's computer I think it's now we've left the electronic music period behind we're in a computer music period and the sounds on the whole are going away from electronics and the directions people are going are going away from synthesizers it's going away from synthesizers and away from drum machines and away from the sounds of the 80s um, I mean, I've been predicting that we're going to have soon a new form of music that's totally dependent on computers in a way that we haven't had so far. And maybe Jungle is that music. Um, they're certainly using software in a way that hasn't been used before. I mean, Gold is giving the game away now by 
giving an interview and talking about the bits of software that he's using. And uh, it's kind of interesting to see that people are actually now thinking of movements in terms of a new bit of software. I mean, this is something that a couple of years ago would have been regarded as fucking William Gibson material. But it is, that is the case. That a, a change in the software will totally change the music. I mean, if you were to write a new version of Cubase with a totally different page, immediately lots of records will come out using that trick, you know, and you can really influence the course of music with software. I really believe that the net is going to uh, totally revolutionise the software world before it does the computer, before it does the music world, because it's going to totally destroy overpriced music software, I hope. <laughs> I mean, I think it's crazy that people are still paying like a thousand bucks for music software that doesn't work. There must be somebody in India or somewhere, you know, who's written a wicked music sequencer and they, they must be able to distribute it through the net. I really think in India as being a major computing country in the, in the next ten years. Because they, they have just haven't... Oh dear, I don't want to be racist, but they, they have so much mathematics talent in India. Particu mathematics and chess always had that as talent in India. And uh, I think they make wicked programmers. <laughs> Of course, a website. Yes, of course. It's called the site for sore ears, um, and it's at humor.southern.com uh, or uh, www.southern.com in the UK. Um, and uh, it takes a lot of my time, <laughs> but it's a good way to check out where I'm going to be, and has all my reviews on it that I do, and it has uh, all my charts on it, and it has samples of all the new tracks before they go out, and discographies are about 200 other labels and uh, lots of weird stuff. Stuff just comes and goes. Um, Any final comments? Anybody you would, you would like to, um, I don't know, give respect to for um, the weekend or, or for your travel? For this weekend, well, you've got to take your hats off to the, you know, Got base and all the people that put and Dave Prince and stuff for putting to put this thing together, because you know it's the sort of event that people were saying, oh no, it couldn't be done. And every time I come to America, there's always people telling me, oh no, this can't possibly happen. It can't happen. It can't be done. And meanwhile, it is being done and it is happening. And uh, people are very negative about their own scene over here. And they always say, oh, I wish I was in England. It must be much better. And I think that's really foolhardy. The grass is always green on the other side, isn't it? Um, especially the other side in Amsterdam. <laughs> um, because, you know, if the parties get bigger than this, they'll get more commercialised than this. And, uh, you know, if this party was twice as big, it would be nice, but not at the price of having to have Moby and Kiyoki play instead of the DJs here, you know, that would be a shame. And that's kind of the direction that Britain's gone in, only much more so. So, you know, you have hundreds and hundreds of useless DJs, and all the good DJs can't even play in London. It's really tragic. Um, I think the standard of the standard of competence is much higher over here because you can't get by just on blag and politics. You actually have to be able to play records, and even to make people dance. And in England, you don't need to do that. All you have to do is be a powerful music industry figure. And uh, if that happens over here, then I guess you'll seem to be dead too. And uh, then it's just time. You know, you have to keep away. You have to keep ahead of these bastards just by being, you know, two steps ahead of them all the time. Because uh, you know the the world moves at an accelerating pace as we reach the the cusp, and uh, what used to take a year of you know a, a musical style that used to last for a year is now lasting for like three months. You get you go away for a month's holiday, you're going to miss like four styles of jungle or techno, and uh, it's getting insane. Like I spend my life trying to keep up with the stuff, and it's just the quantity is just overwhelming. I like a challenge, <laughs> but. Uh, Oh, there's interesting things coming. Um, this is why I really was saying two years ago that jungle is going to mash up scenes that think it's things, people think scenes that see it as completely irrelevant are going to be totally irrevocably altered by it. And most of what I said has now come to pass because jungle is going to mash up the whole hip hop scene, it's going to mash up the whole jazz scene, it's even going to mash up the techno scene and all three of that and the trip hop scene. All those things are happening now. Um, I mean, every day I hear a story that's more and more outrageous. I mean, just heard today that uh, John McLaughlin's just done a jungle record this week. You know, I mean, a month ago he was in London buying jungle records, and now he's done one. You know, and that's going to mash up all the jazz heads, isn't it? And equally, you know, within a few months you're going to have Gold is going to produce Ice T, and it's going to be number one or something like that, isn't it? You know, <laughs> I mean, it's inevitable. Um, good luck to him. Um, 
there is a really interesting hip hop and jungle crossover, and it's not just the hip hop sampling records. I think it's going to be an interesting new kind of rap jungle coming soon. I think T Power's doing some stuff like that. I've got, I've got a dub of a new T Power thing that's like that. Um, I think I think T Power was the best thing that happened in '95. Um, actually made ambient jungle into a real music instead of just a buzzword, and uh, that album was the biggest left field success of '95. Started off, you know, with a thousand pressing, and it's now done fifty thousand around the world. Um, and I had more mail about that one record than anything else that came out last year, I think. Um, and like all great records, it totally divides the audience. You know, people they either love it to death or they hate it. Um, and I think this year, Square Push is going to do the same, only more so, because he is, without doubt, the most talented musician in in the the wider techno world that I've, that I've seen in many years. And without doubt, most all the commercial DJs are going to absolutely hate it. I mean, they're already backlashing against him, and the guy's only been going for six months. You know, they're already trying to stop his records being reviewed and stuff because the guy's so talented. They're all terrified of him. Um, what I was going to say when his batteries run out is their comparison with jazz. I mean. You know, sure, I'm interested in jazz, but I kind of only want to hear the First Division people, you know. I mean, I want to hear Miles Davis albums, and I want to hear Thelonious Monk albums, but I don't want to pick up any Kenny G, you know. <laughs> or Akka Bilk or something. But it's always those, you know which guys make the money. You know, it's the, the lightweights. But I, I kind of like the heavy stuff. And I don't just mean hardcore. I, I have a thing that I used to use in my SIG file, you know. I used to say, if you want to be hard, you know, be hard as algebra. Not hard like concrete. You know, let's be hard like mathematics. <laughs> let's be, let's have hard thinking, you know, instead of just hard trancing. How on earth did we get to that? <laughs> well, thanks a lot. That, that was, was very That was a ramble. That was, that was very ramble. interesting. How long have you been up, just so everyone's aware? Uh, what day is it out? <laughs> I got some sleep on Friday night, so... Uh, about 36 hours. Since about, yeah. But I've now got to play.
I didn't get your name yet, so let's start with like, what's your name and uh, what kind of music do you spin? First part's easy. Okay. Mixmaster Morris from London. What kind of music do I spin? I spin what I like on the whole. Um, people call it lots of different names. I call it music. <laughs> Is, is it slow paced or fast? Or yes. Very slow? No, I just said yes. Oh, okay. It is slow or fast, yes. Oh, okay. It can be slow or fast. So you go through like a different... I don't understand this a law that DJs have to play all at the same tempo all night. See, I don't understand that. That's kind of like having chocolate soup followed by chocolate followed by chocolate pudding with chocolate sauce, isn't it? It's kind of like too much of the same thing. And uh, I believe that most people, that there are now, you know, a thousand and one types of techno and the number is rising every week. And most people like at least two of them. So why can't we mix different types? But, you know, there seems to be some unwritten rules that you've got to play all jungle or all hardcore or all ambient or all hip-hop or whatever. And I like to mix these things up. Okay. So you pretty much go through all the styles? No, just all the ones I like. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> um, there are lots of sometimes conflicting, sometimes reinforcing motivations that go on when you're selecting stuff in a chill-out room. There's a lot of things going on in my, in my mind. You know, first is the necessity to play the stuff that other DJs aren't playing. And on the whole, most DJs play the, the safest, you know. When people have only got an hour to play and they've got to make an impact or they don't work, you know, they might not get to play in that city again. People play the biggest hits and the biggest tunes and so all the things that are a bit more subtle get left behind. And anything that's experimental just isn't getting played. Because DJs are too fine to experiment. I mean, you wouldn't know from hearing it from most DJ sets, but the last few years people have branched out and made a lot of techno at different tempos, uh, techno with different time signatures, different rhythms, and you know, I think we can actually have some of this music out now. I think it's safe to play it. Um, but to get the freedom to play that, you have to get rid of this idea that the DJ's sole function is to make people dance, because I think DJs can do a lot more than just make people dance. Making people on a Saturday night full of ecstasy dance is not really difficult, you know. You yeah. could bang a stick on the, on the <laughs> stage, you know, <laughs> bang a pile driver and they would, they would dance in some places. In fact, in Germany they do. <laughs> um, it's much harder to make them think than it is to make them dance. Or to make them listen. Nice. But now that people know, you know, most places they know what I do and they know I'm going to play something different and it's worth listening to, now I have... I've, carved a lot of space for myself you know people don't expect me to play the same records as anybody else which is good because you know I don't want to play the same records as the DJs if other DJs start playing all the records I do I'm gonna to have to find some new records won't I um, but uh, the people's visions of what I do in America seem to be a bit slightly behind the times people keep ringing up and saying oh yeah you're famous for your beatless soundscapes and I sort of go oh I mean well, yes, I have done some beatless soundscapes in my time, but there's nothing wrong with beats. It's just, uh, the, 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 there's just got to be something better to life than uh, a kick drum substituting for beats, you know. It's not a rhythm, it's just a, a pulse. And uh, I like music to have, you know, a rhythm that took more than 30 seconds to program. <laughs> I, I mean, I'd like people to spend, you know, more than, more than a few minutes on getting the drum track right, you know. Um, I like a bit more labour put into tracks. You know, when you listen to a Fotec track or something, or a Black Dog track, you can tell there's been uh, hundreds of hours of programming work have gone into the ready thing. And, you know, it shows in the results. There's real attention to detail. With the early, de with the, like with the early Detroit guys, the music's very minimal, but every sound is perfect in itself and placed in exactly the right place. And do, you, do you get into uh, producing any records or anything? Uh, yeah, <laughs> um, I've done about...